Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're doing well. Let me put on my earphones here for a second so I can hear myself. Make sure that you guys and girls can hear me. How are y'all doing tonight? Hopefully you're doing well. Thank you for joining me. My name is Laney Shaughnessy. If you're new to Spindle TV, uh, welcome. I'm Laney Shaughnessy and I'll be your host this evening. Tonight we're going to talk about 3D modeling. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of modeling. Um, if you are a follower of Spindle TV, you know a couple of weeks ago I showed you this knife uh, blank that, uh, and it's not sharpened yet. Uh, it it's still got the dull edge and everything. Um, but uh, this was given to me by a knife maker in Ocala, Florida. And I wanted to make a set of custom handles for it. Now, this knife is not going to be used uh, for anything. It's going to be for display purposes only. So I'm going to go kind of crazy with the knife handle. Not crazy, but we're going to model up hopefully something nice. Um, and, uh, you know, for this. And I wanted to talk to you about how to, uh, when you're doing something like that, whether you're modeling something custom and all, a way to bring it into your Vetric software and make sure, you know, it's scaled properly so you can build the right size and everything, uh, you know, uh, handle and stuff. Uh, I don't have to sit there with calipers and take a bunch of measurements and all. I just uh, was able to take a photo and bring it into the Vetric software. So that's what we're going to be working with. We're going to be making a knife handle for this knife and all. Now, next week, I have uh, been holding on to this for a very long time. Uh, this was given to me uh, a long time ago by a follower of my original YouTube channel, Dave Harrington. Uh, and, um, you know, I promised one day that I would make a, a case for it, a, a flag case for it and stuff. And uh, years and years went by. I mean, here, let's see. Hold on. When's the postage date on this? 2014 may march 11th 2014 uh this was sent to me and i never did anything with it and so next week we're going to um we're going to model a case uh for it uh and everything so what's inside of here so uh what we have is uh Airlifting Wounded Warriors uh, patch, uh, 379 EAS, uh, EAS, uh, but uh, yeah, so, and um, I've got a 39, uh, 379th Exped Ooh, uh, Expeditionary Aeromedical Evacuation Commander coin, uh, so nice coin, it's in its plastic case. Uh, and everything. Now, let's see here. Let's open it up here. I don't want to touch it too much, but uh, uh, nice focus, focus camera. You gonna focus? But uh, nice little commander coin that was uh, given to me. Um, it has a an American flag in here folded, and then there's a certificate. Let's see what the certificate says and so again 2014 uh i haven't done anything so uh this is the certificate uh it says 379th uh expeditionary expedin expeditionary <laughs> sorry sorry guys uh aeromedical evacuation squadron this is to certify that the accompanying American flag was flown during Operation Enduring Freedom on Aeromedical Evacuation Mission Number FMJF0468A055, uh, call sign Glide 53, over the skies of and into Al Aduid AB, Qatar, and um, on February of 2014. Laney Shaughnessy in the United States, United Federation of Woodworkers. Uh, this flag is dedicated to Laney Shaughnessy and the United Federation of Woodworkers for their service to the community public. Thank you for your growing support. And for those of you that may not know, I have a community 
uh, the United Federation of Woodworkers uh, with uh, quite a few members. Unfortunately, I haven't, uh, I haven't done a lot with the United Federation of Woodworkers. I've got to get back to that. Uh, after all, it is my community. I've got to get back to the, my, my folks. But I got their certificate. So I want to create a project that encompasses all of that, the patch, the coin, the flag, and their certificate. So I want to design something really fitting for it. And uh, that's we're going to do that next week. So, uh, and uh, again, uh, you know, Dave um, Harrington, uh, he moved to Florida not too long ago. And I, I, I got a call from him last week uh, and uh, asked me how I was doing and everything. And it was the first time I heard from him since uh, 2014. And everything so it made me look up on my shelf i had this this has always sat here up on my bookshelf just like that not displayed or anything uh not getting the respect that it deserves and all the cool stuff that's in there so next week we're gonna we're gonna create a project for it so join me for that we'll see what we come up with all right um uh and all so yeah it's gonna be a pretty cool project now, uh, as we're talking about projects and everything, uh, you know, uh, the week before last, we were talking about lithophanes, right? And uh, we, we did the lithophane projects and everything. And I talked about wanting to do a lithophane project on a piece of PVC pipe on the fourth axis, right? Uh, you know, uh, thick wall, schedule 40. This was three inch PVC pipe and everything. Well, it's not done yet. As you can see, it's partway done, right? You know, uh, and, and everything. Uh, I misgaged uh, when I, I made the, my wooden plugs to sit on my fourth axis. Uh, and I was off. <laughs> terrible. It's all about the setup, guys and girls. I was off on my center on my plugs. My plugs were, you know, they were perfectly fitting and everything. But the center, when I put it between the centers, it was off slightly. Right. So what it did, let's see if uh, how well we can tell by looking at the ends of this. It's going to get funky in the camera. But um, uh, what it did was I don't know if you can see. Let me get on the right side of the camera over here. The wall, this area here. Is thicker than let me get over there over here. Not by much, but it is just enough. And what had happened was, by 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 being off like that, as it was coming around and carving, the material got really thin, and uh, you know there was you know it poked through, right? So uh, it was on its way, and I mean a good looking project here. Let's see if we can let's see if we can uh, turn it on and at least see something, right? At least see something. Let let the uh, light catch up here. Uh, and everything. I don't know how well the light's going to work with all of my green screen stuff going on. Here, let me see if I can, just for a minute, let me see if I can turn green screen off just for a second, my background. Uh, green screen, none. Whoa. There's a green background. All right, let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Still a little fuzzy. Um, but uh, let's see here. So there were trees in the background, and this light isn't the perfect light for it. Uh, but uh, trees in the background, and then there was snow and logs, and right there is the back of a deer. That was going to be his legs. Uh, you know, there was it was a deer scene. Well, we didn't get that far because poked a hole in it. Right there, you see that hole. So uh, I had to step back, and I got I had to. Redo my plugs. Ooh, that light's bright. Uh, had to redo my plugs and everything, and I uh, cut another piece of uh, pipe. I got everything uh, laid out, uh, but I haven't, I haven't carved it. This is, this is, so uh, this is all I have to show you of that. But um, that is uh, what's going to be the Lithuanian project, and perfect thickness and 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 everything here on this side. Uh, and all except for I got a little bit of hole right there. 
that's because it's starting to get around to that same side where I was thin on on that side. So, got to step back and uh, hunt, basically, on that. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, but all in all, it was turning out great. Uh, the Man, the PVC is like static. That, all the shavings and all coming off of it, it sticks to everything, and it, you can't just wipe it off. With the, with the candlestone lithophanes, I could blow it right off or vacuum it right up. Man, that the PVC is like magnets and everything. All right, let's get uh, let's get back into uh, show mode here. Ta-da! Like magic. Wow, isn't that amazing? All right, and uh, and all. So, all right, let's uh, take a uh, peek at uh, what we got going on over in uh, my second screen here. And uh, uh, just take a little gander at it, uh, a little bit bigger gander. There you go. Uh, so what I did, let's turn off some layers uh, and all here. I've been kind of playing around today and messing around with the design. But what I did was it, I took a photo <clears throat> of the knife with a ruler or a tape measure, if you will um laid out and i had the tip of the knife at at the one inch mark and uh what that allowed me to do was gauge you know uh it's uh 11 and 5 eighths not 12 and 5 eighths remember i started at the one inch mark but it allowed me to kind of get my layout uh and and size and everything uh so it i was able to import that photo and then scale it up scale it up so that it fit appropriately for the design. So this guideline here, if we look at the properties, the guideline new position is zero. That guideline position is zero, right? This guideline position is 11 and 5 eighths. And that's how the overall length of the blade, remember it says 12 and 5 eighths because I started at the one inch mark, but it's 11 and 5 eighths. So I was able to lay out those two guidelines and then scale the image up appropriately uh, from tip to tail and uh, get my size for my project. So that allowed me to, you know, start laying out my outline and everything. All right. So we are going to uh, take uh, it from here. And I have this set up. Let's talk about the job setup for a minute and then I'll go into full screen on you guys. Uh, but in the job setup, I do have it set up as a two-sided job because even though I'm going to carve both handles from the top, I want to be able to, you know, copy things around and look at it overall, the handle overall and everything. So I got it set up as a two-sided job. I have it, uh, set up on, uh, 15 inch by three inch by inch and a half thick material. I don't, I don't need inch and a half thick material. It's not going to be anywhere near an inch and a half thick, but that's what I, I created it at. Uh, I'll change that appropriately once we get more into the modeling and stuff. Um, and uh, for my two-sided job, working off the waste board is Z0, starting from the bottom left corner, and I'll be flipping it along the Y-axis in this design. When I actually carve it, both handles are going to get carved side by side out of a piece. And I had my choices of material, and I wanted to bring the material in to show you, but you know, I had a piece of zebra wood. I had a piece of uh, this beautiful orange marble uh, wood. I forget what it was called. Uh, and then I had this really nice piece of, uh, I want to say, spalted maple. And if this was going to be an everyday use knife, the handles need to be basic, you know, just comfortable, plain and, and things. Uh, this is not going to be used. This is going to be on display. I'm going to make a nice little stand for it and all to be on display. So I want to really do a nice decorative handle. So I'm modeling it up a nice decorative handle. Um, and uh, the, um, the use of a scanner does uh, give very good accurate uh, results for importing. So that's a great uh, thing. I wanted to throw that up there, Ed. Uh, but um, uh, if I was going to use this every day, then the handle would be, you know, more smooth or ergonomic, comfortable, you know, for that everyday use and all. Uh, an example is my everyday carry. 
um, which is a clinch pick. And the handle is very basic. Um, it is just uh, very comfortable. It's designed to fit in the hand. Uh, the thing that's unique about the clinch pick is it's not sharp on the blade side, which you would think it's sharp on the back side. Uh, this is designed for grappling and things. You know, when somebody has you to be able to do some serious damage and all on that pulling motion, uh, you know, yeah. So, uh, but the handle is very uh, smooth and economic, right? Or ergonomic, right? Ergonomic. That's right. Ergonomic. So, um, but this knife that we're making, I'm not going to carry. I'm not going to, it's not a hunting knife. I'm not going to take it out in the woods. It's not a bush knife uh, and things like that. If it was, then this would be a very boring class uh, because I would just be making a very simple um, plain handle. I want to do some modeling. So we're going to, we're going to do some decorative modeling and all. We're going to try to make this interesting. All right, let's get back to um, that. Uh, and yes, so Charles, I believe Charles, your question is, could you just mirror it, right? When we create the model for one side, we're going to mirror it or flip it to the other side, right? Uh, uh, we're, we only need to make one handle, one half of the handle, let's say, because the handle would be the whole thing, right? <laughs> we're going to make one handle, half of the handle, and then, uh, flip it to the other side. So yeah, in a sense, mirror it. Uh, and, and yeah, and, um. Uh, that's what we can do. Um, yeah, so much stain. I was staining today, guys and girls. I got stain all over my... I should have worn gloves. Always wear gloves when you're staining, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Okay. All right. So, let's... Uh, so, we got our job set up here. And let's talk about what I have done up to this point. So, at first, you know, I got a pretty clean image. I took this image on a white background. I had a nice white background that i laid on top of my cnc table uh i laid the knife on it put the tape measure to it and everything and then i just did overhead shots and i took quite a few different overhead shots from different distances and things and made sure the lighting was real good i do have a little bit of shadow cast off you know from the lighting and everything so i have to when i'm doing my outline i got to be mindful of that that is not part of the knife that is part of the shadow and everything in there and all uh and and all and all that stuff and also i do not want to make the handle exactly to size i want to oversize it slightly uh once i get it put on then i'm going to come in and do some fine sanding to really sand it to the contour and get some of these serrations and things uh, that are in the handle uh, to show up and stuff. So those will be, uh, you know, all done with hand files and stuff. So I got to keep in mind that, you know, I'm going to offset what I trace out here. Uh, and, um, you know, so what I did was I started off with the trace bitmap tool. And uh, it gave me a, a, a decent outline. So if we went into the trace bitmap tool here, and uh, on the image, uh, if I select the image here, select the image. <clears throat> my mouse is so big. Uh, my, my screen is so big so you guys can see everything without it being blurred. It's just, uh, it's crazy. Uh, Stand by. Make sure I'm not buffering or any of that stuff. Okay, so let uh, everything catch up to itself. Um, let me do this. I've got other things. Remember we were talking about, um, uh, oh, what was it? Prism carving and everything. Uh, these are some of the projects. Prism carving. We had a nice, uh, great gentleman, um, uh, James uh, Stewart, uh, that. Uh, Came up with a great method for prism carving and getting exact heights, but being able to control the width of your project. I'm going to do a follow up. I did a follow up on that uh, on 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 here uh, talking about the single line text method, but uh, I've been working with another gentleman uh, that uh, 
come up with another way that works very well. I want to understand it completely, and then I'll do a follow-up video on that, showing that with you guys all as well. All right. So I had to close those programs and um, all that wonderful stuff. All right, y'all still with me? Everybody still with me? Good. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, select our image. Why won't it let me select the image? <laughs> there we go. It's letting me select it now. All right. Close this. Okay, so let's turn the fading off so we can see what's happening here. And, um, you know, uh, as a black and white, basically, I can kind of bring up the uh, detail, right? I, all I care about is the outline, right? Uh, I'll get the whole placement and all that stuff later. But I can bring up the detail of the design to do my best to get a solid, uh, the best that I can get a solid trace around here, right? And um, the, when I previewed this, uh, it gave me, let's turn off some of the layers here. Let's undo that. Control Z. Love Control Z. Let's create a new layer. I got some layers here. Okay. Uh, so when it traced it, uh, if you look, the lines, I mean, it was going to take forever to clean them up to just get some workable lines all the node editing and everything because of the, the little bit of shadowing and stuff i had i mean it was just a terrible trace right so i mean my goodness what's what's our other option uh, well let's use the curve create tool and let's just draw it out you know we can follow the curve so i scratched the idea of the uh, bitmap trace because i can do it much quicker and faster with our line tools and curve tools and stuff uh, uh, to get the layout and rather than playing with node editing and getting this cleaned up, right? So um, let's uh, close that tool. And what I'm going to do here in just a second is I'm going to restart this program because it seems to be dragging a bit. Um, but um, so what I was able to do was uh, let's turn this off and let's look at what I did here. I was able to take the curve tool, draw curve tool, and um, we'll uh, create another layer here and we'll do that as well. And a, a long kind of combination with the line tools and everything, but I was able to quickly come in and just pick various points to start to lay out the main part of the design. Get everything very quickly uh, right around the handle and then, you know, finish it off. Now, of course, that's not an exact tracing, right? It's a curve tool. There's a lot of curves in there. So uh, I was able to go uh, uh, quickly go into node editing uh, turn this into a line so I get that kind of uh, straight line across and then come in and start kind of uh, fine tuning and adjusting these curves for a more exacting fit. Now, where it came when it came to the serrations uh, and stuff, what I did was I just went right straight across them because, again, I'm going to kind of be filing to, uh, you know, the exact size and all. But I was able to kind of uh, start to quickly get an outline in here. And I got to remember that this light gray area here is shadow. So I'm just kind of, you know, staying clear of that. Uh, and, um, you know, getting these nodes pulled into place very quickly can start working my way around because I am going to be offsetting. Uh, this part, I'm going to be offsetting this part or this tracing, uh, to give myself a little bit of extra meat, right? Uh, to give myself a little extra meat to work with and everything. And so let's get out of there. 
and let's pull this here. All right, bring that over to this corner and pull this down there. And then come over here, pull this down to there. Come over to here, turn this into a line and get this over into this point and insert a point right about here and kind of pull that up to there start getting that outline around there remembering that this is shadow that dark area right there so um you know pulling up to where i need to be at get my curve correct Come on around, pull this up a little bit on the belly there. Pull this down. And again, on kind of the serrations, um, staying clear of, uh, or staying straight, kind of straight across uh, those uh, serrations and all. Because, because, why because? Because I'm going to be, uh, you know, sanding to that kind of touching up and all. And so getting this kind of generally laid out and all, I was able to uh, quickly create uh, the uh, initial outline and then taking a circle tool and kind of getting the general size of the circle and we'll we'll zoom in there and we'll uh size that up a little bit more appropriately bump it over with the arrow key right about there and over here let's time to talk about this one rectangle tool right always look at things as shapes uh basically a uh, rectangle tool uh, if we take that tool in there, that rectangle node editing, and we right click on the end, and let's do that again. Let's uh, go into node editing, right click on the end, and turn that to an arc. The other end, turn that into an arc. Do a little bit of rotation. And we can kind of pull that into place and then hold down the shift key, keeping it centered where it's at. I can size it, start to size it up. And where's my other little box at? Where's my other box at? It's hiding from me. There it, oh, there it is. It's hiding right there. Pull that out a bit. Not that much. Zoom in, get to there. And I kind of haven't decided um, if I'm going to, and let's turn this in node editing, uh, we'll turn this into a busy curve so I can kind of um, get it more exacting on this. It's not exactly a lips there. And over here, pull this over a little bit. Use my arrow keys on my keyboard. There we go. And use my arrow keys on my keyboard. And to get that general shape, right? So, uh, and here all I did was I took a, a, a circle tool, kind of got the general circle. And then in node editing, I kind of just pulled this out a little bit and all that stuff so nothing major there i'm not going to i'm going to be uh drilling these so i'm not going to be cutting them size i'm going to be drilling them for my brass pins that i size for that but very quickly rather than messing around with a bunch of node editing and straightening out lines i was able to uh kind of quickly outline uh this uh blade now i want to i do want to pull this back a little bit and I do want to pull this a little bit tighter in there. Okay. And then from there, I was able to offset it outward about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, oops. After we select the vector. Boom. 
offset it outward about a sixteenth of an inch, and that would give me my overage, uh, you know, that I can uh, shape down to and everything. But that was my working, you know, shape, right? All right. So from there, now I have an outline. And by the way, uh, most photographs and all, when you uh, when they're not selected and everything, they dull out or they fade out. If you um, right click on an object and go to the object properties, you can turn the fading off. So normally the fading is set about partial way. I and mean, when you click on it and everything, it'll light up. But every time you go to do something else, it quickly fades away. Well, if you right click uh, on that object, open up the object properties and you turn that fading off, uh, it will stay in its full glory. And that's what kind of gives me that better visual for drawing and everything on. OK, so a little pro tip there. All right. So let's uh, let's turn off that layer of that tracing that I did and let's look at my handle trace vector. I have it in red here to make it somewhat a little bit more visible. OK, so this was my tracing, uh, my initial tracing that I did uh, earlier today. Um, and uh, from there, everything has to have a foundation. <clears throat> and so. I'm not going to build the model off of this exact tracing off of my offset, my offset, um, which is here. Uh, oh my gosh. It's still got all that tracing stuff in there. I forgot to undo that tracing here. Let's get rid of all that crap. Hold on a second there, folks. We got to do a little bit of uh, uh, house maintenance um, real quick. Delete. I love that the software groups that stuff together. <laughs> um, uh, so all I had to do was click on it and delete it uh, from earlier when we were tracing. But you'll notice there's all kinds of little vectors here. There's a vector running down the middle here. There's a square vector right there. There's all kinds of stuff in here. And we're going to talk about these uh, coming up here in a minute. But right now, what I want to focus on is this 16th of an inch offset right here. Uh, using uh, the Aspire software's create shape tool um, with that uh, offset selected, that 16th of an inch offset selected, I was able to come in and create my foundation, my base. And let's split our view uh, side by side here. And let's get this kind of turned around. Oh, I would say something like that. And on this, I was able to create uh, my foundation. I, I did a curved profile with a 20 degree angle. Uh, and I gave it a 3 16 inch base height, which is straight meat. So it's going to push it up 3 16 and then it's going to slightly curve it or contour it over uh, at a 20 degree angle arch. Uh, and um, when I created that, it uh, gave me the foundation, which you're about to see here, because I'm recreating it. It gave me the foundation for our, our, our handle. Now, almost certainly, uh, literally, if I was doing a basic, you know, utility work knife and all that, I'd probably, uh, you know, I might do a little bit of sculpting or something in here around the, the finger area, but I'd drill holes in it and I would cut this out and, you know, then I would just do my fine contour sanding to my hand and I'd be done with it, right? But we're, we're, we're taking it beyond that. We're going to add some decor to it uh, and, and everything. We're going to make it a presentation knife um, and everything. So this is our foundation here. And now everything from here is going to be built up off of that or taken away from that. Uh, so essentially, this is kind of one half of the handle. Now, I've only went 316. So there's, there's going to be some more uh, thickness to this, but it's going to be created as we create. And I only created up to really uh, one more step after this. And then now it's all going to be you and I. Uh, we're going to be making this uh, handle and everything, but um, I wanted to uh, show you the first steps of just creating the basic foundation. All right, let's take a question real quick. Um, 
Did you print it out at 100% or lay the knife on paper to make sure the dimensions are perfect? Ed? I love you, man. That right there is a tape measure. And I have the knife uh, and the tape measure on a white slab, a white, uh, a piece of candlestone, actually the candlestone. Uh, I laid the knife out, uh, with that so that when I imported the photo, I could size the photo perfectly based on its actual measurements. And I have the tape measure brought in with me, uh, for that. And, um, the, uh, notice here, I started on the one mark, right? So we got to subtract one inch from the end, right? But uh, I have a guideline at my zero, the edge of my board here, this guideline right here. And from that guideline, I have another guideline over here that is 11 and 5 eighths, which is the, the size of the, um, the knife, 11 and 5 eighths. And I was able to, when I had those two guidelines, I was able to scale the photo up appropriately uh, to those dimensions and everything. So as far as printing it out, um, the, uh, I don't need to do that. Um, the, the CAD cam software is to scale, uh, my guidelines every, every, every time I draw a box one inch by one inch, it's one inch by one inch. I don't need to print it out, uh, to, to validate anything. Uh, if I, um, you know, uh, wanted to take and hold my knife up to it on the screen or something and, 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 uh, uh, do something like that, I could, but if you want to print it out, sure, absolutely. Uh, you can print it out, uh, and, and all to scale, however you want to do. Um, unfortunately, uh, let's see here. Will it give us, we go file print, uh, print all properties, plain paper, black and white, layout, portrait, print on both sides, advanced, uh, letter, disabled, I don't see anything that says 100%, but um, anyhow, um, I'm sure I'm sure it's somewhere in here and I just don't see it, but uh, I don't need to do that. My, my CAD cam software is to scale one inch is one inch and all that wonderful stuff. So when I uh, lay something out, uh, it's, it's, it's there. I'm, 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 I'm 100% confident that uh, when I go to create these, this cutout, that it's going to fit exactly as it should uh, and everything. But that being said, now that being said, always good to test, test, test. So, Ed, you got the right idea. Uh, uh, Edward, sorry, Ed, not Ed. I'm calling you Ed. Edward, you've got the right idea. You can absolutely, the better off you are and the more confident you are in uh, the project, the size, and everything is just right, then the less mistakes you made, right? So do it uh, and all. I, I, me personally, I'm comfortable enough uh, with uh, my experience with the software and everything that um, it's it's on. So I don't know if that answered the question, but anyhow. Um, why do you not use Fusion 360? <clears throat> Blue Knight, welcome to Spindle TV, where we teach CAD CAM CNC training on the Vetric software. Uh, Vegetary Carb Desktop Pro and Aspire. Uh, I dislike Fusion very much. Uh, it, I, it, you know, a lot of people love it and everything like that. I am Vetric through and through, red, white, and blue. I, even though they're in the UK, uh, which is also red, white, and blue, but uh, I'm a Vetric guy. And, you know, uh, I teach Vetric. My s machines that we sell go with the Vetric software. We have no affiliation or anything to do with Fusion 360. So I do not promote it and I do not like it at all and yeah it's it's free internet-based free and all that stuff uh but uh i, I don't want to be tied that way 
to software. So I don't know. I, I hope that uh, was helpful. But um, yeah, uh, any Fusion 360 folks out there, don't unsubscribe just because I don't like Fusion 360. I just, I'm a Vetric person. I teach Vetric software on Spindle TV. So uh, that's why I don't use Fusion 360. All right. Uh, yeah. So there we go. That's some good questions. Thanks for asking, guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, I believe we have it. Edge uses uh, Fusion. Uh, a lot of people do. Fusion's great, uh, you know, for, for you folks and stuff that like it and, and all that. I'm just not one of them. All right. So, all right. Where were we at? We were uh, talking about our components. So you'll notice in the component tree here, I have two levels, level one and level two. Uh, let's turn off uh, level one uh, or level two for a moment and come back to level one. Level one is my master copies, okay? Uh, component one, that's my base, right? So if I were to rename that as the handle base, um, that is my base model. And then component two is an additional model uh, that's going to create kind of a little bit of a recess right here in the handle, a little step down, a little contour and things. Uh, which we're going to get into in just a second. We're going to talk about that. Once those two components were created, uh, keeping them intact in case I needed to make any changes, I made a copy of them uh, in uh, level two so that I could bake them together as one model. And now by baking them together, like taking water and flour and making dough, uh, I'm able to now sculpt and mold and shape uh, those models. Um, and, uh, so let's go ahead and we're done with the picture. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we have our model laid out or our vectors laid out and everything. And let's turn off our level here so we can look at our vectors and look at this conglomeration of mess right here. Well, I've got everything leveled out on layers here. So let's, uh, turn off some of the layers and let's talk about what we got. We have our initial handle trace, right? Uh, on our layers uh, and um, then the model layout vectors uh, the model layout vectors is my offset that's what my foundation is as well as these two additional uh, rails that you see here this rectangle and this profile up here so let's split our view again Uh, this is a great question. Uh, Laney, why did you burn an inch? Why did I burn an inch on the tape measure? Uh, because, uh, because, uh, I, the little, uh, tip at the end of the tape measure, you know, it's, uh, it can, it has that flexibility, whether you're measuring on the inside of something or on the outside of something, the hook, let's call it. Um, I did not want that to come into play and I did not want to take any advantages. So by starting at the one mark, uh, and burning that inch, uh, it gave me the ability to make sure that my size is right on and there's no slight uh, fluctuation. Uh, so that's a good question, Kevin. Um, got some other good, man. You guys are just popping them out here. Um, Wayne says, can you use a digital probe to copy the handle of a knife uh, to make a duplicate? Um, if so, will you ever have a class uh, when you teach that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, we're going to be talking, Burl and I are going to be talking about the digital probe in a couple of weeks on Digital Woodcarver's channel. We're going to be discussing it and all. Um, one day I will have a class on it, but probing takes a long time. So yes, the answer is yes, you can use a probe to duplicate an existing three-dimensional object. Uh, you can 3D digitize that, uh, that, that probing project, that probed project. Uh, and uh, you can bring it in as an STL. You can, you know, clean it up. You can do whatever you want. You can uh, export that probe file as a DXF file, uh, as a G code file, where you just turn right around and copy it. I like doing it as an STL uh, so that I can bring it into my software and clean up any, you know, uh, little anomalies and stuff like that. Uh, but the probing process takes a while um, uh, for a very, uh, 
accurate probe, especially if there's a lot of detail, uh, Wayne. Um, I just did an eagle not too long ago. It was a small little sucker. It was three inches by four inches. Uh, and it was 12 hours to probe that three inch by four inch model or item uh, and all to uh, duplicate it. But, um, you know, it, it is, uh, it has to have its time. But, you know, hey, when it's time's done, it's done. You know, uh, you have that file and you're done. Uh, but yes, the answer to your question, yes, you can do that. It's a good, that's a, that's a way of uh, reverse engineering or duplicating an existing item. Uh, let's see here. Do you use the software to draw for CNC machine? Um, to draw. Uh, you're talking about um, like metric designs, like sign making and stuff to draw, not just modeling, right? Uh, this is just modeling. Um, if you're talking about just normal sign layout or project layout or furniture making or uh, any of that, absolutely. Um, Man, I really just want to say, if you get a, ever get a chance, um, check out the channel. There's 178 videos on everything that I do in the software. Uh, and uh, drawing, uh, image tracing, uh, model layout, uh, importing from SketchUp 3D designs, all kinds of things. Uh, so, um, yes, I use this for everything. Even my laser machine my laser projects, I do all the design work in Vetric, uh, and then I export it out for uh, the laser engraver, the CNC machine, the plasma cutter, uh, whatever, you know, machine, CNC machine I happen to be running. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Yes. But yeah, I do everything, everything, everything gets drawn in here. Um, okay. And the, uh, these are all good questions, guys. Uh, yes, is Vetric, I'm in the Aspire software. Now, 90% of the time I'm in VCar Pro uh, because VCar Pro, everything that I do and all the software can be done in Desktop Pro or Aspire. The only reason I'm working in Aspire tonight is because I'm 3D modeling and that cannot be done in desktop and pro, uh, only in uh, Aspire as the modeling tools for 3D modeling. So that's why I'm working in Aspire tonight. And, um, but yeah, everything I do is uh, Vetric through and through. Okay. Minus when I'm in SketchUp. I do use Google SketchUp to uh, imagine or, or come up with my furniture ideas and everything. And then I import those vectors into uh, Vetric uh, to create the tool pass to carve on the machine. So that's the, aside from that, you know, uh, that's all I use. Um, I do use Photoshop when I have images that I've got to clean up to bring in for lithophanes or uh, like this knife handle and things. Um, and all, but uh, as far as CAD CAM software, I used to use Bob CAD CAM, uh, do not like it at all. Uh, and, uh, when we switched over to Vetric, there's been no other, I've been faithful. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about these vectors and let's talk about these shapes. So the first, uh, shape I want to talk about is, um, the base or the foundation of the model. Now, the one thing I want you to notice is there's a big chunk taken out of here. So let's see uh, how that how that works. So if we go uh, into our uh, mock-up that we just did, uh, that I have in level two up here, this mock-up right here, um, I created, let's go into, let's turn off uh, these layers and turn on my model trim vector. Basically, I have uh, the handle that I traced out of my offset, you know, my 16th offset. But then I came in and I redrew this area here to create a trimming boundary uh, because I wanted to contour another model 
uh, for the handle part, the lower part of the handle. So if I were to take my model here uh, and the selected vector here, um, I can use the tool here to clear the area from inside the model or clear or selected vector or clear the area outside of the selected vector. And by clearing the area outside of the selected vector, um, it gave the ability to remove that chunk, right, to that vector. So you can see kind of the uh, where the model was removed to. And that gave me this area here that you see outlined. That gave me this area here uh, a chance to create something different, a different part of the model. So coming back uh, to layer one, to my handle that has been trimmed, okay, which is the same thing as you saw on the other one. Now I needed to create the model material uh, for here. And what I wanted, what I wanted to occur was an, a little step down uh from the edge here a little step down and then kind of a, a gradual slant and curve uh so basically if we were to look at this profile that i have drawn here and let's get that off the board is my handles up here somewhere you know where this arrow is and so i wanted to step down uh, uh you know i have a certain height here and I wanted to kind of come come across a bit because this is getting buried up into this model right here. So I came straight across. But right when it starts to kind of reveal itself, I want it to start to kind of slope down uh, when it gets to the edge. And by doing that, uh, I had to, now that I had the profile, I had to kind of create the pass. And let's turn off some of the vectors that don't apply. Um, I had to create, let's turn off model trim. There we go. I had to create a path or two of them actually that I wanted this shape to be, you know, this, this profile to follow. I wanted to do what's called a two rail sweep, which basically allows me to take an object um select my vectors and make them what i called or what's called drive rails these are the rails that this profile here is going to be swept and scaled across it's going to be scaled across the width of this so it will change its height and thickness based on the width of these lines uh, but it's going to be swept between those two lines and I have an exact height. And when it builds this model, this shape, I want it to scale up to an exact height. In my case, 0.21. Um, and I want it to merge, merge with the existing model. Uh, I don't want to add it to it. I don't want to subtract it from it. I want to merge with it because part of this is up inside of the handle back in here, kind of hidden. And um, when applied, when that two rail sweep is applied, uh, it will, you know, it's going to create uh, this additional uh, model here. And currently right now, this model has no height, right? No place, none of that stuff and everything. Uh, and so if we close this. Close. And we uh, come in here. Let me turn off this additional base. We don't need two bases on, just one. Um, you'll see that the shape, I have my little step down that I'm going to be sculpting. I'm going to be smoothing this out and kind of blending this much uh, together and all. But I'm going to have this uh, slight indention uh, where the fingers will come around 
uh, the knife and everything. And here I'm running a very low drop off here. And then as we get into here, it's more of a drop off because that shape, that initial shape is getting scaled based on the space of these lines. So where they're further apart, it's thicker and taller. Where they're closer together, it's it's shallower and everything. And if we look right here, very, very closely, if I select that new model, you'll see a red poke right there. Where the back side of this profile is poking through. Okay, so that's what this rectangle is for. By selecting that component and then selecting that rectangle, I can remove the area of the selected model from with inside the selected vector and delete that part out uh, and uh, get rid of it and all. So. I don't want it in there and everything. And then my handle, I've got to do some sculpting and stuff. We're going to uh, kind of fine tune this and really blend uh, this in really well. Right now we're kind of in the rough stage. And this is where I was today. So you guys are kind of caught up to this far. Now, now we're going to start to really layout and model and everything so <clears throat> let's come into our layers up here and let's uh look at our uh decorative vectors so i've got some decorative elements here that i would like to uh add in uh to this handle uh, i'm going to be using a combination of these i'm going to be using a, a mixture of them uh, and, and, and blending them together to uh, get a pattern and all uh, and everything. And hopefully when uh, all is said and done, we'll end up with a handle that kind of resembles that, right? You know, yeah. Looking pretty sexy. All right. That's where we're heading. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, great question, Sylvia. How does the rectangle help this model? Well, what it did was, on that component, this lower component right here that you see in red, and let's maximize this up for a minute. This selected component right here, which is this lower portion of the handle, right? Well, that where it was created, um, it right here, and I should have trimmed a little bit more. Matter of fact, let me undo that. Edit, undo. undo all right and you can see that that model that got merged with the main base of the handle is uh, protruding it's sticking out right here and so what the rectangle does is uh, as a matter of fact i'm going to bump it over a little bit oh not the whole thing Lenny. undo everything back to where it was I need to bump this over a little bit. Uh, what this does is allow me to select that component and that rectangle and tell the software to clear, get rid of everything of that model that's inside that selected vector. And that's this tool right here. Clear the area of the selected component inside the selected vector. And uh, let me bump it over just a little bit more. There we go. <clears throat> And by doing that, it's going to delete that part of the model, get rid of it uh, there, clear that out, so that um, 
there's nothing protruding through the handle. So that's how the rectangle helps, Sylvia. Cool. If a modeling file is made in Aspire, can it be copied and then cut in VCAR Pro? And what changes will I be able to make? So uh, if a model file is made in Aspire, it can be exported out as an STL model. Um, and that STL model can be imported in Desktop Pro, you know, uh, whatever you want. Um, Fusion 360, all those good things. Uh, and uh, from there with Pro, the only modification or changes you'll be able to make are uh, the smoothing of the model, the model height, overall model height, the size of the model. You can scale it up or down on the X and Y scale as well as the Z scale. Uh, you can um, slice a model if you need to, slice it into series, like if it's a 360 degree model and you need to slice it up to carve it in individual pieces and then reassemble it uh, off the table. Uh, and um, that's pretty much it. And that's, that's, that's pretty much, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can only bring one third party model file, STL model file into the project at a time. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So, uh, tilting and fading and all that stuff, uh, you'll be able to do with other models that are vetric models, but, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, very limited. So scaling X, Y, Z scaling, uh, smoothing, um, you can slice and that's it. So that's all that, that'll be the modifications you can make to that model, John. Okay. And, um, the, uh, models, uh, as far as designs, um, uh night uh blue knight asks uh where do you get your designs uh if i don't make them myself uh using uh zbrush uh then i get them off of turbo squid uh thingiverse uh ebay etsy um and uh yeah so Turbo Squid, Thingiverse, eBay, and Etsy. It's kind of my main go-tos uh, for models. Now, that particular handle that I showed you, uh, that is not my design. Uh, this is a model off of uh, eBay. Uh, it comes as a 13-pack. So 13 knife handle STL models for 12 bucks, right? Uh, and um, when looking at it, uh, I really liked the uh, design and layout. I'm going to change a few things um, in all my swirls and things. Are, it's probably not going to come out uh, uh, like this, basically. But this is kind of the general. This is my muse, if you will. My muse. Uh, this is what I'm shooting for. Uh, something of a of, you know similar design and things. And uh, that is um, uh, eBay. And uh, 12 bucks worth every penny of it. Uh, if I wanted to use this model, um, you know, and, and size it up and uh, make slight adjustments in the Aspire software, you know, to fit my knife, then I wouldn't have to do any modeling at all. It's done because I bought the, you know, I bought the, I bought the 15 pack uh, and all. But uh, eBay, eBay is uh, your good friend when uh, looking at things. But I would like to teach you guys about modeling and sculpting and things like that. So using that as inspiration, we're going to model our own knife handles from scratch. And uh, yeah. And uh, normally I'm using my art pad, uh, my uh, Huey on pad uh, and all. So I have a a stylus pen to model and sculpt with. It's a lot more natural feel than a mouse. Uh, tonight I'm using a mouse because uh, we're uh, filming. And um, so we'll do, I'm pretty good. I, I've used a mouse for years, so I uh, should be able to sculpt nicely to blend and push and pull and, and get some shapes and stuff and all. 
So, uh, yeah. All right. So what I've got here is I've got some different flourish vectors. Uh, I liked, I did like that element of that knife handle, uh, the way they used uh, the little flourishes to uh, give it some detail. I also like the weave. And it's not really a weave. It's, it's kind of almost looks like lattice work uh, in the background and everything, uh, that crosshatch. We're going to do that. Um, I, I like that element and stuff. But I like the flourishes and things. So I created um, my own flourishes of different uh, designs based on, and when I say created, I traced them uh, off of uh, flourishes that I have, vector, uh, vector flourishes, vector flourishes that I have. And I went through and I deleted a bunch of the elements uh, in those flourishes. I didn't want, like this one, I still have the vines and thing or the little separations in here. I don't want those separations uh, and stuff in these other ones that had them. So I removed them. This flourish right here uh, is this one as well without the little spiky leaves, which is this guy right here. Uh, and also uh, got rid of all the little uh, leaf veins and things. I just want the silhouettes uh, and, and things because I want to be able to utilize them in uh a multitude array like if i wanted to take this guy and rotate him and you know have him coming out of the back of this one uh and then create a model based on that or you know add some other decorative elements to it or uh, embellishments and everything just depending on what pattern we're going to go from here these are the vectors that i picked and chose from that I can cut, slice, node edit, uh, manipulate, change uh, to create a multitude of different vines and things. So we're going to be doing that. All right. So back to our handle. Now, once those two components were created, were created, then now I need to kind of there are two separate components right here, component one and component two uh, that we just created. <clears throat> well, I needed to uh, be able to blend them together. Uh, I needed to be able to, to bake them together so I can now sculpt and smooth and, and add material and remove material and things and, and build off them. So creating a new level, right click, insert new level, and then taking those two components And holding down the control key and dragging them up to that next level, which I did from level one to level two, um, that allows me to create a duplicate uh, that control holding that control key. So I have a duplicate here of those handles. Uh, and then I can go back and turn off my originals. And with those originals turned off, now these two models can be baked into a single component. So we're going to take these two individual components and bake them into a single new component. So that will bake them together. Uh, once that is baked uh, and everything, it is now one model. So when I go into my sculpting tools, uh, and uh, my um, other tools and things, this is one component. If I need to backtrack or backstep or backpedal, whatever you want to say, and I need to um, make changes, then I have my originals uh, still intact that I can, uh, you know, work with and stuff. And so I, if I screw up anything, I can then, you know, come and uh, adjust those fixes in my originals and then just, you know, start back over and stuff. Okay. And uh, so what I'm wanting to do is kind of blend 
these areas. More appropriately, let's see here, let's remove some material. And let's turn down the strength of that. I don't want to remove a whole lot of material. I want to kind of shave this off here. Get a little bit more uniform size. And then I'll come in and um, start kind of smoothing things out again. You know, and uh, I removed a little bit too much material right there. So I'm going to smudge, I'm going to pull some material. Start kind of pull that out a little bit. That just a little bit of a rounded edge there. And then I need to remove some of this. And then smooth it all out again. All right. So now that, uh, you know, I've got a general kind of shape and, and blend here on these two components and stuff. Now I can come in and start actually decorating this and building it up. This is just, again, we're still kind of in the foundation phase of, of all of this. And um, I actually want to kind of, let me see if I can pull a little bit of Great thing about something is if you screw it up, you have what's called an undo brush. So I can undo everything that I just did there and uh, redo it. All right. Let me build that back. All right, smooth. Uh, let me turn that smoothing up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that'll work for now we'll come back and finesse it later so what's the difference between smooth and smudge so um smoothing let's uh oops let's go back into here and of course, I drug my mouse uh, when I close the tool. I drug it with me, so we got to go back in there anyway. Drug it right along there, I did. Yeah, always let go of your mouse button when you're... <laughs> um, the uh, What's the difference between smooth and smudge? So smoothing uh, will uh, is smoothing out the edges and the contours and things smudge is pulling the material. I'm smudging the material from one area to another. So um, if I were to twiddle my view, that's a funny term. If I were to twiddle my view, that allows me to turn and twist and turn and all that stuff. Uh, the smudge tool allows me to pull 
material from one area to the other. And let's turn the smoothness off. I don't want to be smoothing it so much while I'm smudging it. But I'm basically uh, smudging that material. So, for instance, if I drug this over that, like that, I'm pulling that material. That's the smudging, which, of course, we don't want to do that. Undo. Gotta love the undo brush. All right, let's um What would you do? So the smoothing tool just lets me uh smooth things up. All right, I don't need to play with that too much because I'm going to be building models on top of this. When everything is all said and done, then uh, we'll get into that because I can see a little bit of a ridge right here. It's pronounced, uh, you know, when I'm in my uh, tools and all here. And so the, let's get back to spin this around. We'll come back and finesse that little area there, but let's start building the other models on top of it and all, and to get this thing built up. Got a little bit of a defect. And if I needed to step back at this point, you know, like right now, I mean, I could come in here and undo the sculpting um, uh, to undo uh, that, um, any of the sculpting that I did. Um, I could, you know, just control Z my way back, or I could just, uh, you know, step back and punt and uh, rebake the components and bring them back in. However you want to do, you know, whatever gets you to where you need to get to and everything. And all. And so, as you see, we're back to that undo, right? Right where we started. So, uh quickly i'm not gonna do any thing but uh get this blended in back together real quick and then we'll get it moving on <laughs> twiddle uh, also, holding your alternate key uh, will let you twiddle while you're still in the tool. You don't have to go over and click that button. Okay. So we'll leave that be right now until we get it all the way done and then i'll come in and do some final sculpting with all the models together but right now we're still got the foundation um you can see where i smoothed this area here um where when i smoothed it there is a little bit of that uh, protrusion from that model even though i trimmed it i didn't trim it well enough because when i smoothed this uh i rounded smoothing kind of rounds that edge over and so it kind of exposed a little bit more of that underlying model so i just got to keep that in mind when i go back into the sculpting tool to uh address that if it's uh if it poses a problem uh upcoming okay let's get back uh let's get back into uh the game of things uh yes it, it is going to be two sides sylvia so sylvia's asking the same question that uh i think it was ed or someone did um once i'm only modeling one half of this uh once it's all said and done then it's going to get mirrored to create the other half of the handle this is only one half of the handle 
Uh, so, uh, shortcut key for undo is control Z blue knight. Uh, so, all right, let's get, um, uh, tippy about as close as I can get right there, brother. Uh, I'm at 1280 by 720 as it is. Um, but, um, you know, basically here, let's see if we can get into a 3d view here. Let's go one last time quickly back into the sculpting tool. I'll clean this little area up right here. That little indention. <laughs> make my size a little smaller and um basically it allows me to smooth and blend those areas okay so just like that uh the you know smudge tool uh if i were pulling material you know i could smudge the material and all that stuff um and everything and i'm gonna undo that there we go okay so yeah sculpting we're gonna get we're gonna be sculpting here in a minute but let's actually let's get the models not even uh anywhere near completion so let's get uh let's get a move on it's 8 30 so we've been at this an hour and a half and we've only made the foundation all right so now from here now i need to kind of start uh kind of designing uh my layout and i don't have a particular pattern in mind uh or or anything in particular i do have the elements that i would like again i would like to have a little bit of that uh uh cross hatch pattern that we see in this uh handle here kind of like that that little recessed uh indentions i do like uh the way it's recessed in these areas with these flourishes here and stuff we got a little bit of cross hatch up here and, and everything so it's kind of a continuation it stops right about there think of a big old arc uh, if you will, and all, uh, I like that. Uh, I like that element. Uh, so I think, you know, I'm going to kind of, uh, work on that area. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another, uh, layer here. This layer is going to be my, um, my model design vectors. And, uh, we're going to, turn off the other layers uh, so I can sit here and uh, draw. And with that layer active, uh, we can kind of start coming in and, and laying things out. So uh, I'm going to start uh, the way I started everything is I, I kind of start with the general shape. Uh, in my case, uh, everything to me is a rectangle. Uh, from there, uh, how do I manipulate uh, that rectangle to achieve the design that I want? If you want to look at a simple des uh, way to approach design and layout, uh, check out my video on how to design a Maltese cross, which talks about using guidelines uh, and shapes, uh, in my case, rectangles or squares, you know, to create other shapes like a Maltese cross and stuff. It's a good practice video to really get you an understanding of how you take things and step back and look at them. And to me, everything in the world is a rectangle. And from there, it is curved, contoured, and creates other shapes. So if I go into a node editing here, I'm going to turn this into an arc here. Not that big of an arc, but an arc. And you have to understand, I'm working on the knife handle. This is the back side. That's the front and all. Uh, so I'm going to come in and basically kind of get a general idea of if I were doing a crosshatch pattern, uh, what, what shape or what uh, position is that? 
uh, taking what what arc or what flow and everything. And um, that looks like a pretty good flow there. And so I will pull this over to here. I'll pull this one over to here. And I'm going to maintain this uh, this rectangle as a shape because I'm going to end up using it as a boundary. So I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve, uh, this, this bottom line here. And I'm going to kind of create a rough layout of where I want the main part of this design to uh, yield from, come from. No. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's start creating some patterns here. So I'm going to, let's take a rectangle here and let's make a small little skinny old strip. Uh, this little guy is going to be about a 16th. Oh, six, five. Uh, and uh, it's going to go the full length of the um, knife here. And I'm going to take that, double click on it to put it in transform mode. And I'm going to come in and... Hold down my control key. And I'm not have any particular spacing in here. I'll get my spacing uh, spaced out exactly how I want it here as soon as I get, oops, undo, control Z. Uh, hold that control key down there, partner. Okay, my goal is to make sure that my pattern, hold that control key down, that my pattern, move him into place, uh, you know, pretty much encompasses the whole area here. That boundary that I created earlier, that's going to be what my clearing boundary when everything uh, is said and done. Now, as far as spacing, uh, you know, making sure everything is, you know, spaced uh, appropriately and all. I'm going to take a rectangle here and uh, I'm going to snap my rectangle from one corner to the next on this. And uh, we'll go ahead and hold down the shift key and space it out. I'm stretching it out with the shift key. The reason why I'm holding the shift key is so it does both sides at the same time. And if I select these uh, rectangles that I just drew here, uh, select them first, and I select the rectangle last, the, the main one, the big border boundary, I can use my alignment tool and I can align them to the center, right? They're all centered now. Uh, and then I can space them equal distance horizontally or vertically. And in my case, it's vertically to create that equal distance spacing. So now they are all equally spaced. Okay. All right. And um, so with that, I can go ahead and get rid of that boundary. I don't need it anymore. Delete that. And now I'm going to take my uh, selected uh, vectors here, select these, and I'm going to do the same thing uh, in a uh, cross pattern. So I'm going to copy and paste. You can either right click, copy and paste, or control C, control V for your keyboard shortcuts. You can go up to your edit menu and copy and paste. You can go to your drawing tab, close your tools, uh, and copy and paste. Either way you want to do it. Uh, for me, I'm going to control C, control V, copy and paste. And then uh, I want to rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to rotate this 
90 degrees here. Okay. Right. Uh, and I actually am not going to go a full 90. Once I get everything laid out, you know, my lines and everything laid out, uh, then I will. Um, what am I trying to say? I will, uh, I might slant them a little so they have a little bit more of an arch to them so they follow this arch a little bit better. All right, so I can't use the offset tool here. Um, I can't use the offset tool to lay this out uh, and everything uh, in one way or the other, but I sure as heck can use the array tool. So I'm going to drag this copy uh, to my end. Yeah. And if I were to measure the distance between these parts, the gap, if you will, if I were to measure the horizontal gap between the two rectangles here, that gap is 04989, right? So if I come over here and select this last one, I'm going to use my array tool. I want uh, one row, right? It's one single row, but I want, uh, let's see here, probably about, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So probably about twenty-eight. We go twenty-eight, and with a gap of point oh four nine eight nine. Uh, between them and a gap of zero on the Y. Uh, if I copy that over, that will create my array. 28 was not quite there, right? I was close, but no cigar on that one. Let's go, uh, let's go 38. Here we go. Okay. And uh, that will give me my copy here. Ooh, doggy. Starting to look all crazy. Right now, let's undo that because for some reason I had two rows. I need one row. There we go. Mo better. All right, let's uh, select those and I'm going to group them together. Uh, it makes it easier for uh, kind of working with. And I'm going to group these guys together. So I have two groups here now. And now, now I want to kind of start thinking about my layout, my pattern, my grid. Don't let that play with your eyes and stuff, but uh, my crosshatch, uh, if you will, I want to kind of uh, start, you know, figuring out what kind of angling, ooh, it's trippy, um, what kind of angling and everything I would like this pattern to have and all. Uh, that's going to be created because there's going to, you know, only parts of this pattern is going to be showing that, you know, parts of it is going to be, you know, taken out and stuff and everything. So uh, I'm kind of digging that, right? So uh, with this uh, here and here, this crosshatch pattern, I'm going to select both of them, both of my groups, and I'm going to sneak in here and I'm going to hold down my shift key and select that profile that art profile that i created last make sure it's last i'm going to come into my trim tool and i'm going to clear everything outside of that last selected boundary so uh that'll get rid of that and um you know uh give me that uh crosshatch pattern okay okie dokie all right so guys with me y'all with me all right, now, um, on that uh, pattern now, this pattern here, um, when it uh, cleared all of those areas and stuff, uh, it closed off those vectors and all. And so now I have, uh, let's come in here and select all of this, turning off my little screw holes, making sure they're not selected. Little screw holes, making sure they're not selected. 
um, and turn off my outside boundary, arc boundary. I want to group those together. Oh, I got a component in the group. I had my model selected too. All right, so have that group together. And then I want to take my outside boundary, my shape here, my outside boundary that I created, uh, that arced boundary. And I'm going to offset it outward from, you know, all the way around. I'm going to offset it outward. Uh, let's see what a 16th of an inch will do. Let's delete the original. Offset outward. 16th of an inch is too much. So I'm actually going to go uh, offset. O oh, four nine eight nine. You guys remember where that number comes from? Right? That was the spacing of my grid. All right? Offset. And uh da, 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 still too much. I don't like that one. Let's go a 30 second. All right. That'll have to do. Okay. That will have to do. Now, on some of the uh, shapes when it closed off the vectors, uh, you got some funky shapes here and all, but uh, that's okay. Um, these are going to uh, be redrawn. So let's select uh, all of these vectors here. And the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, I want to remove the material in the model. So now we got to split the screen so you guys can see what's about to happen here. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, remove some material in that arch here. So I'm going to take that selected arch there and I'm going to go into my modeling tools in the shape tool and I'm going to create a flat profile. A flat profile. Uh, I'm only going to go super shallow, maybe a 30 second if that. Uh, let's try a 30 second and see what that does. And I want to subtract it from the previous component. So that should create this negative arch uh, in the uh, component below it. Is it going to make me merge low? Let me see here. Is it going to make me... Okay, let's apply that. Oh, that was way too much. All right. Let's get that in there. So we're going to go a uh, 30 second, 03125. Click apply. Let it build that uh, shape back up. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. And so we have this slight recess. In here now don't worry this uh this area is uh you know even though there's like gouges and all this is going to get built back up with other components and things i'm just removing that so that when i build up this grid that it's going to bring it flush uh up to that so i'm going to start a new component here and i'm going to select my grouped vector and uh, I'm going to add that in and click apply. Okay. And let's, it looks weird now, but. Uh, when it's all smoothed out and blended with the rest of the models and everything, it will, you know, uh, be better. Now, if I didn't want to do it this way, uh, where it's like a checkered pattern, 
uh, if you will. You can see that checker pattern a little bit better there. Let's get back into a full view on this. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. If I didn't want to do it this way and I wanted to create more of a, um, a lattice type work where it was uh, streaming, you know, longer lines and things, then uh, similar to this here, where it's longer stems, right? It's not checkered pattern, it's longer stems that you see in these areas here. You know, it's kind of creating that weave pattern and all more so than a checkered. Then I would draw my vectors accordingly, you know, and everything. And uh, this model is a muse. It is not uh, for me to, uh, you know, duplicate. I'm not trying to duplicate. I just, I like the elements of it. So I'm going to utilize some of them. So whatever shape you're trying to go for, go for it and all. All right. Now that those two components, those two components uh, that I created, this one here and this one here, they're kind of like their own little standalone model, right? Uh, they're not baked in with the other one. They're 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 separate, if you will. So uh, coming back to here, if I open up my vectors to my model trim vector, you can see my vector here, right, uh, where my little finger hole is, where it's overlapping that finger hole, and how it's you know close to here and all that, but not quite that kind of thing. Um, all I have to do is, if I want to get rid of that stuff, let's split the view. Come into here. And don't worry, this is not the finish. This is the underlying. There's other stuff coming and going to be happening on top of all of this. Um, so you're barely going to see that checker pattern here in a little bit. But um, all I have to do if I want to get rid of uh, that component is uh, with that selected vector and that selected model, clear everything outside of that selected vector uh, so it deletes um, that part of the model and um, let's actually bring it in let's let's bring in our vector a little bit more i'm going to offset it inward offset inward uh, twenty thousandths of an inch. A mm, little bit more. Thirty seconds. And select my model. Select my vector. Clear everything outside of that selected vector. Okay, and then the other component as well. Clear everything outside of the selected vector. Okay, so we start getting, you know, our shape back and everything. Uh, that's what our vectors are for. They're trim boundaries and all that wonderful stuff. We're going to be doing other trim boundaries here in just a moment and all. Uh, that are going to hide this, all of this stuff and everything, um, and all. So hopefully uh, y'all are still with me. All right. So I uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of the checkered pattern, but uh, I'm going to stick with it and see what uh, it looks like when it's all said and done. I may end up coming in here and drawing uh curved rectangles uh to follow the curves and um yeah i'll leave that for right now all right so we've got this let's start building some shapes let's start cutting some stuff out of this and uh you know creating our um 
patterns and all that stuff. So on the handle, the this this pattern is not going to go all the way down to here. Uh, so I can, you know, trim that as well and, and, and clean that up and stuff. But I want to start adding some of the other elements before I come in and start trimming and cleaning and all. So in my decorative vectors here, let's start adding some elements and all. And it's hard to work that way, so I got to get into full screen here. This large screen for you guys and girls, it makes my screen so big, I, I, I don't have room to work. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's size these down more appropriately. I had them sized up so you could see them. Let's get them on the board here so we're all nice and tight and all that wonderful jazz. All right, so now we're going to oops. I'm going to start pulling in some shapes and I'm going to be using my control key a lot uh to kind of drag copies uh of, of things um to keep kind of my originals intact and stuff and these shapes are going to overtake these grids they're going to be built up over this whole grid pattern and and things like that uh and stuff so um hold down that control key and everything so these patterns and that's gonna let's turn off let's see if we can turn off our grid there you go make that easier for you guys so y'all can see what the heck's going on here uh the patterns and things uh you know that uh are going to get created are it's i i'm i have no pre-assembled plan right now right it's just whatever uh i think looks good uh so no um whatever i think rocks my boat you know whatever rocks your boat uh you can you know do i'm gonna use the number nine key to rotate that i'm gonna size that down really small and rotate that and all here and you guys if y'all have any questions um uh, uh Why did Emmett trim that 2D view? Laney, why didn't it trim the 2D view? Um, oh, of the model, the grid pattern and everything? It did. Uh, you just don't have, it doesn't have it visible. So here, let's see if we can uh let's see if we can bring it visible 2d preview bring to front and 2d preview move to back bear with me a moment Let me find out what layer that's on there, guys and girls. Give me a second here.
Okay. I figure out what uh, layer that was in, because in order for you to be able to see it in the 2D view, Sylvia, I'm not sure what you mean by trimmed. Uh, you don't even see it in the model. So, um, you know, uh, in the uh, the 2D view. So, not sure what you mean. If you're talking about the actual vectors that I had on. Um, where's the vectors now? Those? Those wouldn't be trimmed. Those are the vectors. Those aren't the models. And there's the model hiding right there. Uh, so I need to move that model to a different layer. Da -dum -dum. Oh, here, let me move, just move these. Oops, I'll do that. On the model, Sylvia, it, it did trim it in the two view. It's, it's trimmed there. It doesn't trim, it trimmed the model not the actual vectors themselves, okay? So the vectors are going to stay intact. The model is what was trimmed, not the vectors. Okie dokie. All right, now back to where we are. Okay. So let's see here. I want a copy of this. Control C. I want to mirror this uh, horizontally. Or nope. Horizontally, vertically. And rotate it. Size it down. Rotate it. All right. Let's see here. Let's take. Borrow this one. Control key, flip that horizontally. I'm hitting the letter, oh, not horizontally, sorry, vertically. I'm hitting the letter H on the keyboard for a horizontal mirror. Uh, ba -da -ba -dum. Uh, ba -dum. That's going to get cut off. I'm, I got to also pay attention to what's going to get removed. So you can see the shadow outline of the area that's going to get removed. This is going to be smooth down here. So keep that in mind, which is fine. Uh, 
that'll work. All right, what other shapes do I have here to play with? Um, let's grab. All these shapes are going to be welded together at uh, some point in time. Uh, this doesn't need to be there. Hit delete and get rid of that. Let's take this. Hold down the control key. And again, there is no pattern and you're like yep that's obvious i mean we can tell that right away there's no idea what pattern you're doing there um let's hit the letter uh, uh v for vertical no nope. h for horizontal you're not going to see all of these uh flowers when the models uh, get built certain areas are going to get removed from another uh one area will get removed from another and um so just think about what you want your design to look like I'm just going to get a few of these kind of into a general um, shape or design, and then we'll build a model of it so you can see the progress and stuff. And I want to pull that down to... There. Mm. Okay. All right, so let's blend this together and let's see what we've got so far. So I'm going to select all of these. This, 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 that, and that, and that. And we're going to weld using the drawing tools. We're going to weld that together into one kind of continuous sh shape. Um, again, this hole is going to be drilled out so you won't see stuff like that and things. All right, so with this uh, welded shape, that and that as well, uh, let's go ahead and build it up in our modeling tools, create shape. And let's go into our 3D view. Uh, let's maximize our 3D view. And I'm uh, going to build a curved shape. Uh, this shape, I'm going to have a 30 degree angle on it. Uh, no base height for right now. Uh, no limit. Uh, I'm going to merge it, not add it, merge it with the uh, previous component. Um, and click apply. And then I'm going to start building up the base height because it's down inside the handle right now. All of those components are small. They're inside the handle. So as I build the base of those components up, as I build them up, uh, they will start to, you know, 
reveal themselves, right? Now, of course, that's too much up, uh, too much base height. So uh, let's go down to 0.25. Remember, all the areas outside of here are going to get trimmed. The boundaries are going to get trimmed just like before. Uh, oops, too many decimal points. Bring that height down some. Oh, so it's just, just slightly proud, you know, of those areas. I want to add something. I got a little bit of something in here, and I want to add something in there. Uh, I might add to uh, floral elements and stuff, but we're going to start, you know, uh, building that design or a design, you know, around until, you know, uh, you know, something looks good. Uh, let's clear just so you can see what this is uh, going to look like when we remove it. Uh, you know, the areas outside of our boundary, right? These parts of the models that are outside of the boundary, uh, we'll remove those. So I'm going to split the view for a second so I can turn on my, this, this is an important boundary here that gets used throughout the entire project and stuff. Uh, so with that boundary selected, Let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. With that boundary selected, uh, I can select my component and clear the area outside of that selected vector. To remove the area outside that selected vector and that's not the actual right vector where's my offset one that we did just a minute ago um ba -da -ba -ba -ba. bear with me a second where's my offset one not that one i gotta get my layers organized you guys got me all m messed up no i'm just kidding it's this one this is the one i want not the one what layer is that in decorative vectors i need to remember that uh one more time select that uh model Come in here and select that vector and clear the area outside of the selected vector. Okay. And, um, you know, so it's trimming to that, that contour and all. Um, and all yes. All right, let's get this back into full view and kind of see where we're heading here. And all and so the the checker pattern, you know, once I get this filled in with the floral pattern and the designs, uh, and I add the other elements to this, that checker pattern is just going to be a very uh, minimal element uh to this and uh it, it won't even be noticeable because there's there's going to be other elements in here uh and things and all so uh here's a good question can you use a watcom tablet uh with this software and the answer is yes uh watcom hueyon uh any type of uh tablet and, and stylus um Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you there. Uh, any kind of uh, stylus or tablet uh, you can use. So um, for me, I use, you know, the uh, Huleon tablet and, and everything uh, when I'm drawing usually. Uh, the uh, Canvas Pro 16. So yeah, Huleon, Wetcom, any of that stuff. Uh, they're good for, you know, uh, drawing and everything, but I don't have this one hooked up. Uh, it's a display tablet. I don't have it hooked up right now uh, but it's Somewhere where it doesn't get broken Hold on a
but yes, you can. All right, so uh, you guys getting the general idea of things here, uh, creating shapes uh, and things and, and merging. So when we merged these floral uh, patterns with the model below it, you know, the previous component below it, which is all this, basically it created the shape height. So the maximum shape height of these guys here now um, uh, it was, you know, is 0.2602, right? Um, they're built up to that 0.25 uh, of meat underneath so it can get it to raise proud of here. Uh, without that 0.25 base height, uh, the model is only point uh, ten thousandths of an inch, right? Uh, just the curvature, that slight uh, 30 degree angle. So it was merged. It was inside that handle. Uh, and uh, we had to give it base height uh, when we were building that component to build it up to so it will protrude, so it can protrude uh, through there and everything. And, you know, again, when we get back into, you know, when we get the components and everything laid out, then we end up, you know, going back in and sculpting, you know, uh, uh, this uh, in, in a way. And uh, since I'm not done working on this, uh, I'll create another level, insert a new level. You're going to have hundreds of levels. Uh, and I'll take all of these components these four components here and i'm going to hold down my control key and drag a copy of those components up to level four just so i can show this next step blue knight yeah, my name is Laney Shaughnessy. You've probably seen me on uh, my YouTube channel where I teach woodworking. Maybe that might be it. Yeah. How you doing, bud? All right. Um, or Facebook or Digital Wood Carver or any of those. All right. So now we have our copies up here in level four, right? So I'm going to turn off level three for a minute. Get rid of level three. Okay. And on the uh, level four copies here, I'll bake them together. The reason why I'm baking them together uh, is to, uh, so I can go in and sculpt and, and things, that, you know, as well and blend and all of that wonderful jazz. Now, of course, we're not really at the sculpting phase or the clean, you know, the kind of smoothing things out phase and all that, but I'm jumping ahead uh, to be able to just uh, show these things. So we'll, with that baked component, now this is all one model again. Again, I have my originals down here, so I can delete this here in a second and go back to my originals and continue on as I was, but uh, we'll go into our sculpting tool here. And in that uh, sculpting tool on that model, um, let's twiddle our view and let's get kind of zoomed in here. You can see that kind of, you know, everything's a little rough around the edges and all that stuff. And so we'll come in and uh, do some uh, smoothing of our components, kind of uh, blending uh everything in nicely with all of our shapes kind of rounding off and pillow topping our little pattern and stuff uh get everything nice and smoothed out so it uh you know just looks nice and blended and it flows well And I've got my strength turned down. Uh, if I, I'll show you what it looks like if we were a little bit too high on our strength and too aggressive and stuff. Uh, let's get our rest of our little 
pyramids and all kind of and of course this is nowhere near done some of the a lot of these pyramids are going to get removed by the other models that i'm going to be creating but you'll get the general idea all right now if i you know um like right in here looks a little that's a little heavy on the smoothing right uh right in here this area a little heavy on the smoothing and stuff if i had the strength like I could have turned the smoothness down a little bit uh, uh, when I was smoothing. Let me do that undo brush. Undo. Love that undo brush. Just wipe back over that real quick. Uh, if I were to, you know, come in here and uh, turn my strength and my smoothing down and things, I can kind of control how you know soft or how smooth i'm making those edges and things when they blend in uh it all depends on you know uh what i'm trying to achieve and things uh if i'm too heavy handed you know if i'm too heavy handed uh then you know it looks more when it's when it's if i smooth this out like this it's looking more like a beehive honeycomb uh type of pattern but then my florals and everything get lost because it's literally flattening them out so when you're sculpting you've got to be careful uh with um what you're you know what you're doing and stuff so uh use your strength your smoothness uh and everything appropriately and let me undo this i'm undoing everything everything my brush rubs on uh is undoing everything i did so if i do screw up i can go back now once i close this tool if i had uh, you know if i had done something i didn't want to do and I close this tool, then my smoothing is kind of locked in. So that's where you have to do an undo or kind of, you know, step back and reset type of thing. Uh, let me just do a light pass here. Bear with me a second. I just want to blend the edges. Oops. For transparency. Just a nice wipe, basically. Much, a little bit more intuitive if you had a tablet, but it's pretty good with the mouse too, not bad. You can be a little bit more selective. All right. Now, let's see if I can... Turn that strength down a lot. I just want to lightly pillow top these checker areas for right now. Not a whole lot. I don't know why I'm doing this because they're going to be gone here. A lot of it's going to be gone here in a minute. But anyway, um, there's a little shadow. Okay, so the uh, you know sculpting and all that's usually left for last. You know when you're kind of just finessing the little things and, and all that stuff. We're not ready for sculpting, but I wanted to just talk to you about that. That would be kind of the next progressive step. You don't have to sculpt. Uh, I could have just um, 
Uh, do you really want to discard all the change you made? Yes, I do. Um, I could, you know, I don't have to sculpt. I could very simply uh, use the smoothing tool, right? Uh, I could just click on uh, apply smoothing filter to the entire visible component, right? So at the very end, I could come in here and apply a smoothing filter, uh, let it open up. Uh, we'll turn it, don't go too crazy, you know, between the minimum and maximum on the smoothing. Again, you'll get that kind of, you know, look that you don't want, but um, let it, uh, you know, that's, that's too much smoothing right there, right? That's that honeycomb kind of effect and all. Uh, so we want just a small amount of uh, smoothing and, you know, slide the bar, let it come over and, uh, you know, look at it uh, to, you know, gauge how much, you know, just let it, don't, don't click OK, just slide the slide bar over, let it generate, uh, determine, you know, exactly the amount of smoothing that you want and things. Uh, and when you're happy with it and all, then at that point, you know, click OK. And that type of thing. You know, um, just make sure it's it's the look and everything that you want uh, and stuff. And all. So again, we're nowhere near done here, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys, it's the, you know, it's the steps, right? It, it really doesn't care about the design. It's the steps, you know, getting your, your vectors laid out, getting your... Um, your uh tools or you know your patterns and things laid out and then building those shapes are they a flat shape are they a curve shape are they a pyramid shape uh we talked a little bit about that uh with the prism cutting and everything and stuff last week and all um and everything so what you know i'm going to continue to do is i'm going to continue to kind of uh, progressively just run this pattern around and then in some areas and stuff i'm going to be removing that pattern because i'm going to be adding other elements and stuff and kind of building that back up so we're going to fairly see a small amount of the little grid that i made that's just kind of a little accent in the background uh and everything and again um if we were to reflect off of our muse here the little grid the little lattice and everything in the background is just an accent. It's just a small little accent. And, uh, you know, I do like this pattern much better with the straight rows versus the checkerboard and all. But, you know, when, when I build this shape back up in the middle, uh, you know, I'm only going to see those small areas that kind of happen here because I'm going to build all this back up to a flat shape and put a little decorative uh, design in there similar to that. And stuff so as you build up i mean parts only parts of the elements and stuff are going to show uh still haven't um you know at the bottom of the knife and everything created the little uh chamfer you know that, that, that's going to kind of bevel down towards the butt and things like that so there's still a lot to go in here and we're not going to finish this model tonight we're at already at 9 30 but i'm just these are the basics and things and okay what are we what are we doing to get to here you know what are we tracing we're tracing our knife we're offsetting our little trace tool to give ourselves a little bit of waste area you know for sanding and things to finish uh and then from there we're creating shapes from these these tracings uh or these outlines uh we're using other decorative elements uh to uh you know create shapes and things from and, and stuff so it's just a matter of just kind of you know having some fun and seeing what looks good and uh you know if i don't like that checker pattern all i have to do is come back into level four here where i baked everything together delete that Turn level three back on or level one or level two, whatever levels your originals are on. And I have all of my originals here. 
And on the originals, if we came in here, um, the checkered pattern, if I didn't like that, I could simply go in and delete that. If I did like it, I can recreate it, that type of thing. You know, I can do whatever I want. We have, and, and I'm a big advocate of keeping your originals intact. I mean, I have the originals that I created this morning here. That's my originals. And it's only the base and that front part. None of this decorative stuff. I didn't get that far. But still, if I needed to step back and punt, then I have that ability. I do not bake together my model. And then all of a sudden it's like, shoot. I don't like the way that looks. I want to change this and I can't go back and change it. I have to start all over from scratch. And that's what I'm hoping that I'm instilling in you guys. Don't do that. Okay. That's what these levels are for in your component tree. If you have a Spire, uh, even in, even in desktop and pro, you know, your modeling component tree, you have different levels. Uh, you have some amazing things that can be done in these levels, uh, like mirroring mode and clipping and, all kinds of stuff uh and all and just because i'm using these components here right these little guys here and making you know my own shapes off of them and stuff you know just kind of laying out a pattern hell i could have saved a whole lot of time by going into my decorative 3d models that already exist within the software vetric vcarb desktop or pro um i could have come in and, and and picked out a number of these different uh flourishes and patterns and and uh things and and you know worked them into the design somehow um and uh we went into our 3d view you know uh which is basically this is kind of a combination of all of these done a little bit better right you know a little bit more detail a little bit more curvature and stuff so it all just depends on where you you know where you want to take it i mean there's uh i mean i could have i could have been pulling these models in instead of my little vectors and creating shapes from them um I could have been pulling. Oop, that's a big one. Hold on a second. He's a big one. And let's give him a rotate. Rotate. And let's get back to here, turn that off, you know, and uh, minus, let's turn off one of mine for a minute. You know, I could have gone through and just used my existing models and built, you know, a consistent pattern all the way across this using what came with the software all of these you know vectors and swirls and swishes and all i didn't have to go out and find uh anything they're all here uh and all so you don't have to reinvent the wheel i'm just kind of showing you the tools of how to use the create shape tool or how to you know add or subtract or multiply or you know not multiply um well that's one of them but uh, merge merge and all but um if i were to look at these shapes if i wanted to consist them i would pick three or four models that uh kind of they apply right they fit together so this would be one which is that guy right there uh definitely you know uh this which is this guy right oh that's actually not him he is yeah he is this one um and uh any other little 
things that uh, you know could fit, and I could go through and make a pretty badass pattern, right, all the way through uh, and stuff. I'm just got my own little shapes here, and said, you know what, I'm just gonna start, you know, throwing something together and see what it looks like, because <laughs> uh, it's a teaching, it's a teaching uh, thing. It's 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 you know. Um, how to do this how to do that if i just drag and drop i'm teaching you how to hold down your mouse button drag and drop right drag drop and size that's no fun uh and you're not learning anything you, you can do better things with your tuesday nights and stuff you guys get it right okay uh yeah and it does look pretty cool so yeah absolutely uh that those models those existing models man would make a beautiful i could blend a whole kinds of things together and uh create some really uh really beautiful design uh without a doubt um and all so all right let's go and see what we got here um Blue Knight. Be nice if they had a smooth all key. They do. It's not a key. It's a button. But smooth all is right here. Okay. So that will smooth everything that's visible. All the whole visible model. It'll smooth all. So that's it's like a smooth all key, but it's a it's a it's a smoothing filter. So it applies it over the whole thing. So that's pretty close. Um. Let's see here. Very interesting. Too bad I can't afford 1600 upgrade from desktop to Aspire in order to do a 3D. Uh, for sure. Understand that completely. Uh, little workaround uh, for you, Edward. Uh, if you have desktop, right, uh, you could very easily create a flat, you know, a profile, right? You're cutting this profile right here out of a square piece of wood or, or what have you um, in your clip art tools. Uh, if you, if I went to domes and dishes, right, I have these, uh, domes and shapes and all that have those little nice curves and stuff. And I could, uh, I could take and bring a dome into this. I could take that dome shape and size it down. This one's a 30 degree, I believe it is. Um, stretch it across my model move it over here in desktop pro or aspire uh you know this is a, these are existing models uh i could create uh that shape there and then i could say okay select with that selected and this vector selected um this is i can't remove it like a veg like a, a spire like as far as clear the area outside the component right i can't do that but i damn sure can do a profile cut that's going to cut out my shape anyway so anything outside of here is going to be gone uh uh and stuff and i can start adding decorative elements to that from my clip art so in a sense you know, you have the molding tool path, right? You can create a molding tool path. Basically, uh, that's, you know, creating a profile and sweeping it along a span. You can create a molding tool path and create a molding shape of that. And use that tool path to do it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. You don't need a spire uh, to, there's workarounds. There's, there's, there's ways to uh, achieve the end result. No matter if you're in Desktop Pro or Aspire, Aspire just gives a couple of nice beneficial tools. Like one, I could spring in that dome and select that vector and say, "Hey, okay, now get rid of everything that's outside of that selected vector, so that way I don't visually have to look at it." Right? You know, that's nice for for me uh, with Aspire and everything, but I don't not necessary. I could uh, uh, just you know, I'm doing a profile cut anyway. It's getting cut out, right? So that's like removing everything outside the selected vector, right? So 
um yeah it's it would be nice to be able to you know you got to go with what you can afford and finances and stuff like that and sometimes you can't thirteen hundred dollars if you have pro or sixteen hundred and fifty dollars if you have desktop but you can still you just got to think outside the box you know you, you you can still achieve certain things right uh yeah it would be cool and cherry uh for sure yeah and um it uh it uh and no and ed i don't take it as uh complaining i every i mean you're just stressing hey Hey, you know what? I wish I had 1600 bucks, man. I just don't have it. So it's too bad. I can't do this stuff, but you can, you may not be able to do it to the level of a spire, but there's workarounds. You know, we are clearing the area outside the selected vector. Essentially. And isn't that what we're doing when we're doing a profile cut and we select our vector and we cut the shape out same thing, right? So I have to look at the model, right? I got to look at it in my my 2D view, but um, that's okay. I know it's getting cut out. I know, you know, I can still see what it looks like in my 3D view and I can do my profile cut. I can simulate my profile cut in my 3D view to kind of see what my progress looks like and all that stuff. So I don't take it as complaining uh, at all. I take it as you just, you're, you're just stating a fact, right? Uh, and I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of answering it with a fact that, there's you, all you have to do all you have to do is just step back look at it and go okay here's the tools that i have to work with how can i get close or achieve that is there a way to do it with what i have available to me and if you look at it and you think about it yes the answer is yes yeah, you can, you know, um, I could take the clip art, decorative clip art models in desktop. Um, those little flourishes and all, I could take my little domes and dishes. I got three domes. I got a 30 degree, 45 and a 60. I like 30. That's kind of my go-to. Um, I could even, hell, I could even create the little, uh, like a little flat, uh, rectangle that has rounded over edges, right? Uh, I could square that off and all. Uh, all, these little things I could take my degree, I could build up my shapes, get a general shape and everything, and then 3D model cut it, profile cut it out, and bam, I got a handle, right? You just got to step back, just look at it and ask, okay, here's what I got. How do I get it done? And there's a way. You just got to find it. Yeah, and, and Fusion 360 is free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. All right, let's see here. Sylvia. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Bear with me. I'm trying to see if I answered all the questions or most of the questions. Be nice if they had a smooth all key. We did that one. Uh, very interesting. Too bad. Uh, can you can you copy and paste and flip it on top of itself? Sure. You can copy and paste and flip it on top of itself. Um, like if you're, you, I'm assuming you're talking about. Uh, let's see here. Let's go into our modeling. Let's turn off that dome. Let's turn on our shape here. Uh, this one too. All right. So can you copy and flip it on top of itself? That would be the, uh, let's zoom out. Full on. <clears throat> if I let's delete that dome, I don't need it in there. On my visible model here, if I select my components, go into my mirror tool, 
create a mirror copy. I won't flip it about itself. Uh, left, right, top, bottom, horizontal. We'll go vertical so it's on top of itself. Give it a second. Okay. Now, not sure what that would do uh, for you there, uh, but um, you can do that. But if you're talking about so you can see what it looks like as a whole handle, right? Not fl literally flipping it on top of itself. I mean, we we can flip it on top of itself just like that. But uh, if you mean uh, not in that sense, maybe flipping it on top of itself so you can see what it looks like as a whole handle, then yeah, that's 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 um, if we take our model here and copy it to the other side, right? Copy it to the other side. <clears throat> Give it a second. I've got my pixels turned up to 16 million pixels um, for maximum resolution. When you're building models, you kind of want a high resolution. All right, so let's twist and turn this. So if we, oops, spin it this way. So, you know, we have our full model layout of, uh, you know, from one side to the other. I don't know if that's what you meant by copying and flipping it on top of itself, but, um, but yeah. So we can see what it looks like as a full, you know, part. And again, not finished yet, but that's you know, flipped on top of itself. And uh, let's go to the, our other side here and turn that off. And go back to side one. So, don't know if that's what you meant, Blue Knight, but there you go. Um, yeah, Mike, it does make your head hurt. I know what you mean, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to make your head hurt. Uh, basically just general shapes right shapes and outlines and we're building models we're building shapes we're creating a model from shapes right so we the, our model is either going to have a curved profile when it's built a pyramid or an angular profile or a flat profile when it's built and the two rail sweep tool where we created that lower level, we basically have two lines or two paths that are our driveways, you know, and our profile, that little nice little profile I drew, gets swept between those two lines and scaled to the right height between those two lines. Uh, and, um, you know, to create that lower level, kind of that step down here. And then we just simply have vectors that we're creating shapes from, you know, giving them a little bit of a curved top because. They're just there as a decorative element and they're going to be smoothed out and things and also it just kind of has a little bit of an embellishment to it. And also, yeah, I could see how it makes your head hurt or it could make someone's head hurt. Like, who has just a lot to absorb and all. And that's why, you know, I'm trying to be as basic as I can right now. And that's why we're not going into too whole much uh, and stuff. Um, you know, this is going to be a multi-part thing. So, uh, and everything. So. You know what I mean? All right, let's see what else we got here. How can I talk to you offline? I need to set up a tablet. Um, you can schedule a training with me through digitalwoodcarver.com under 
learn to carve one-on-one -on -one training. You can schedule an appointment with me. I'm not a Windows guy or a computer guy, but I can help you set up a tablet. Um, not a problem. Not a problem. Digitalwoodcarver.com under the category of learn to carve one-on-one -on -one training. There's a scheduler at the bottom of the training page where you can set an appointment. Let's see. Yeah, what else we got? Oh my God, you guys. Is there a class Thursday? Great teacher, just wished I could remember everything. Yeah, you know, it's hard to remember everything. That's why these videos, you're able to go back and play them and all, but one step at a time, Darwin, just like when you and I work together one-on-one, -on -one, one step at a time. Uh, and uh, you do, you say you can't remember things, but you do pretty good of getting the job done. And then you like, you know, there's one step. Usually there's one step that you're like, oh shoot, I forgot that one. But other than that, you you grasp it very well so um this is this is a lot right this is a lot to kind of take in we're talking you know creating shapes and vectors and trimming and offsetting and all this stuff and it's a lot there's a lot going on right now uh and we've been talking about it for two and a half hours three hours two hours 41 minutes and it's it's too much for anyone's brain these should be 15 minute classes each so you can just absorb that little brief thing in 15 minutes. But unfortunately, I'm not built that way. So, and <laughs> but Darwin, you do good. Don't, don't, don't set yourself short. You, you remember pretty good. You just, there's always that one little step that we always forget. Even me. Camaro, how you doing, buddy? When the backside flipped, could you turn it uh, as one piece model on the fourth axis? Okay, so uh, I have a, this knife is a split tang, you know, so it calls for a split handle, not a single handle. Um, but uh, if it were, you know, you were wanting to turn it, you could, but you've got to create um, you, you, uh, I don't think it's a two-sided thing. It's a rotary thing and you got to create the model. So basically I would mirror this downward. Uh, and then I would have to put the backbone in it. And then I'd have to build the material for the front bone that when it comes together, it creates that whole piece. Not hard to do Steven, but, uh, it, it's doable, a little tricky, not hard, but tricky. Uh, but, uh, you don't do it as a two-sided. So no, you would not flip it over and create it on a fourth axis. You would have to flip it on its one side here, flip it, and then you got to put in the material or build the material for the backbone and the front, uh, you know, and then when it wraps that 360 for that fourth axis, then it wraps into the whole handle. Doable. Doable. All right. So you guys and girls, um, it's, uh, 10, it's two hours, 43 minutes, way too long for a modeling class. Can't absorb it all. We're going to break this up. Uh, there will be a part two to this. Uh, we'll actually come in and finish the design. Now that we've got all the basics, we've got the foundation built. We've got, uh, you know, our vectors drawn for where our design is going to kind of flow. Uh, we've got some of the design started. We've got a finish it off and then put the fine little touches on it and then create the tool pass. So there's still a lot to go. Um, not all going to be able to cover in one class. So part one, we're going to end it here. Great questions, uh, all that wonderful stuff. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm looking at the chats. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, all these recommendations and, and, uh, 
shout outs for Fusion 360. I feel like I should get paid by Fusion for all the promotion they're getting. You guys come to a Vectric class and promote Fusion. Oh my God. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to I don't know how to absorb that in my head. It gives me a headache. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all. All right. All right, everybody. So uh we got the basics done. We got kind of a foundation and we know how to kind of create shapes and manipulate those shapes and things, but we don't have a finished handle, right? It's there's still a lot of work to do. There and all it's too much for one. We've already, like I said, hours and hours. So we're not gonna I'm not gonna repeat myself. I just said all this. Uh so we're gonna leave it here. We're gonna come back and visit this. Uh so what I'm thinking is I'm thinking we're gonna skip. Next week I want to do the flag case. I kind of made a promise to someone that I would do that. Uh, and that gets us back into pro desktop aspire realm so everybody can do it. And then the week after we'll come back and finish up the knife handle. Okay. And all that. Um and uh yeah, I know. Blue Knight, I'm just <laughs> Blue Knight said. I was only trying to help Edward out. Now I'm just I'm just messing around. Uh I don't care. Um uh it's funny. But uh no, it's uh no, it's all good. I wish, you know, Bruce, I wish I could drink Dr. Pepper, but uh look at that. Drinking an invisible sprite. Isn't that crazy? Oh, green screen. But um uh the <laughs> the um dr pepper no that put me in the hospital so i had to switch the sprite but look at that look at that isn't that crazy it's invisible what you see it's spindle tv sprite i'm wondering how it's not leaking everywhere that's what i want to know all right so uh yep rodney we're gonna get into slicing we'll do uh We'll do a 360 model coming up here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make a model where we have to slice it, carve it, and glue it back together or assemble it back together um, to create that three-dimensional carving. That'll come up. We'll, we'll see that. Uh, basically, imagine... Here, let me get something that's not green. So imagine I wanted to carve this, right? This uh, bottle of... Um, what do you call the stuff that goes in epoxy? Uh, little sprinkle stuff that makes it all pearlescent or whatever. Yeah, this stuff. Anyway, let's say that this was an apple or what have you. Basically, slicing is is determining how thick you want your parts to be. Uh, and then you're slicing that model up and it's creating, instead of one model, it's creating four different models, let's say. Let's say I had four slices. It's slicing them vertically. Uh, so I have four different slices now. So each one of those models I'm now carving uh, out of an individual piece of wood. Each one of those four slices I'm carving out of an individual piece of wood. Individual pieces of wood. When those shapes get cut out, profile cut, 3D model cut, and all that stuff, I take them over to my workbench, and I assemble them back together, going back together, and I end up with a full 360-degree model. Right? So that's what slicing is. How many slices or how thick do you want your slices? That's the only two options in the 3D modeling or the slicing tool. And uh, it allows you to just take something that you, I don't have anything really around. It allows you to take something like an apple, right? Slice that apple, carve the individual parts, put the apple back together, and now you got an apple for the teacher, right? That type of thing. So that's what slicing is. And, um, you know, uh yeah we'll get into that we'll for we sure will mica powder right is that what it is mica powder or is that the right term for it i just call it pearl essence i got i got two i got i want to i'm getting ready to do an epoxy project so a good friend of mine dave garbett customer and friend sent me some pearl essence that he had for some epoxy yeah all right everybody well listen it's 10 2 two hours 49 minutes uh, any last minute questions? Now's the time to uh, get her done. No, Rodney, the moonshine glass is in the, in the living room. But uh, 
we'll give it uh, just a couple of minutes. I think I'm lagging behind you guys and girls. I think when I talk, it takes a minute for you to hear me. So we'll see if you got any last minute questions. And then um, we'll go from there. So, and next the uh, next week we're going to do the flag case and everything. That's going to be a Vetric VCar Pro, uh, Desktop Pro, Aspire. Any one of the three can do next week's project. Uh, we're going to be cutting out parts uh, to build this uh, nice decorative uh, commemorative cabinet, whatever or whatever it's going to be, shadow box, however you want to say it. And then um, and then the week after we'll come back to the knife. And by that time, I'll have a nice little idea of what I want the pattern to look like to make things run a little bit smoother, smoother. But um, today is just basics, right? We're just kind of building up that model, how to get how to get the general gist of it. Because right now we just we just made something on the screen. We haven't we haven't created tool paths. It's not ready to run. None of that stuff. So we're nowhere near finished on this one. All right, everybody. And uh, somebody asked about a class for Thursday night. Um, no, there's a, we have a, a, Burl and I have a live event tomorrow at 7, 7 p.m. on Digital Woodcarver's channel. We're going to be talking about CNC router bits, what bit to choose, um, you know, how to choose, you know, the right router bits for the right projects. We're going to be talking about uh, project setup, uh, how to add bits to tool databases, uh we're gonna you know and and how to draw profiles and stuff of your bits so we're going to be discussing that tomorrow it's going to be an hour long discussion at 7 p.m on the digital woodcarver youtube channel uh so join burl and i for that uh and then uh thursday i if there's going to be a video i'll announce it uh wednesday and on spindle training videos on facebook um we might jump right into finishing this knife handle up thursday or something or, or whatever instead of waiting a whole two weeks i don't know i will let you know but right now i don't have anything scheduled for thursday because my day is booked with trainings all day all right everybody um would be carving on the will you be carving rodney on the pea glass what's a pea glass buddy will you be carving on the pea glass Rodney, what's a pea glass? Hold on a second. Can it be done in Carbide Create Pro? My God. What is Carbide Create Pro? Is that is that Easel's or uh, Shapoko's controller or something like that? What is Carbide Create Pro? You're killing me, Blue Knight. <laughs> I don't know what Carbide Great Pro is. If it's something that has to do with Shapoko and X Carve, I don't even know anything about it. Those, no, I don't. I don't know. Probably. Pro I, I have no clue. Uh, plexiglass. Plexiglass is what P glass is. Thank you very much. Can what be carved on plexiglass? Uh, dang it, I keep missing. We can carve on plexiglass. So you don't want to. It's extruded plastic. You want to carve on cast acrylic. Uh, it, uh, plexiglass, you can carve and you can engrave and all that stuff. But with it being an extruded plastic, it melts, it chips, it breaks easily. Plexiglass is, is what you uh, kind of want to steer away from because that molten ball of plastic on your bit when it builds up, you got to babysit the CNC and you got to stop it, pick that plastic off the bit. Because if you don't, that molten plastic is just going to push through the rest of the material uh, and things. Uh, you want you want cast acrylic, uh, preferably on, on a lot of things. Um, Chipoco. That's what Carbide Create Pro is. All right. Well, everybody, that will we'll end on that note. Um, what are you putting in the flag case, Rodney? I'm gonna let you. Uh, um, we're gonna end the video right now. Uh, but uh, at the beginning, it's live. As soon as I say goodbye and everything, you'll be able to go to the Spindle TV YouTube channel. Uh, the first three minutes, I showed an, a pretty nice uh, flag patch, commander coin, 
uh, and a certificate, a uh, pretty cool uh, flag that was uh, gifted to me uh, and things uh, from the service, uh, from a, a military branch. So uh, we're going to be doing that. But check it out. You'll be able to see the actual flag and everything. Um, and uh, all right. Have a great day, everybody. And until next time, I'll see you. Carbide free. So I know you can still hear me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bye. Have a good one, guys.